Moses booth at the exhibit hall. For our reserved seating, the bishops will be seated at the front rows, center aisle, and the priests will follow. May we request all members of the laity to sit at their designated areas. Please vacate the seats reserved for our deaf and mute brethren. Thank you. For those who will be needing translations, Please remember to claim your radio units at the left side of the hall and return them after each use.
Welcome to the morning prayer on this fifth day of the 51st International Eucharistic Congress. To lead us in the chanting of the prayers are the members of the congregation of St. Paul du Chart. Our servers come from the congregation of Don Bosco. As we begin the morning prayer, the sign of the cross is made on the mouth at the beginning of the invitatory at Lord, open my lips. Everyone is requested to rise during the hymn, the gospel canticle, and the intercessions, the Lord's Prayer, and the concluding prayer, and at the end of the psalm, during the recitation of the glory to the Father, which is a fitting conclusion endorsed by tradition, and it gives to Old Testament prayer a note of praise and a Christological and Trinitarian sense. We also make a bow, which signifies reverence and honor when the three divine persons are named together. We all sit to listen to the readings and the homily. Everyone is requested to make the sign of the cross at the beginning of the Canticles of Zechariah. Our presider of the morning prayer is the Archbishop of Davao, Most Reverend Romulo Valles Titi. Buenos días. Bienvenidos a la oración de laudes de este quinto día del 51 Congreso Eucarístico Internacional. Nos guiarán en la oración los miembros de la congregación de San Pablo de Chartres. Los acólitos son de la congregación de Don Bosco. Al iniciar la oración de laudes, con la invitación, Señor, ábreme los labios, hacemos la señal de la cruz en la boca. Nos ponemos de pie durante el himno, el cántico evangélico, las intercesiones, el Padre Nuestro y la oración final. Y también, después de cada salmo, al recitar el Gloria, que es la conclusión apropiada y avalada por la tradición y que da a la oración del Antiguo Testamento un matiz de alabanza y un sentido cristológico y trinitario. Al nombrar a las tres personas divinas, inclinamos la cabeza en señal de reverencia y honor. Permaneceremos sentados para escuchar las lecturas y la homilía. Y al comenzar el cántico de Zacarías, hacemos la señal de la cruz. Nos preside en esta oración de laudes el arzobispo de Dabao, reverendísimo Rómulo Valles. Shardar,Shangbalu 每一首圣咏结束唱光荣颂的时候我们也一样站起来开始颂唱扎加利亚赞助区时，大家化十字圣号。今天陈导的主礼是达沃总主总教区的罗姆罗·瓦利斯总主教。Bienvenue à vous tous pour la prière matinale de ce cinquième jour du 51e congrès eucharistique international. Le chant liturgique aujourd'hui sera mené par les sœurs de Saint Paul de Chartres. Les servants sont les Salésiens de Don Bosco. En commençant la prière matinale, nous ferons le signe de la croix sur nos lèvres au début de l'invitatoire, lorsque nous chantons « Seigneur, ouvre mes lèvres ». Nous sommes invités à tous nous lever pendant l'hymne, le cantique évangélique, la prière d'intercession, le « Notre Père » et la prière de conclusion. Nous nous levons aussi à la fin des psaumes pendant le « Gloire au Père » que la tradition a placé à la fin des psaumes. Cette doxologie fait de la prière de l'Ancien Testament notre louange 
et mette en lumière son sens christologique et trinitaire. En nous inclinant pendant cette doxologie, nous exprimons notre adoration et l'honneur rendu aux trois personnes divines nommées ensemble. Durant les lectures et l'homélie, nous restons assis, puis nous nous levons pour le cantique évangélique. L'office de ce matin est présidé par Monseigneur Romulo Valles, archevêque de Davao, Philippines. Please all rise. Lord, open my lips.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Yet we do speak a wisdom to those who are mature, but not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This God has revealed to us through the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, delegates from Davao, you know how timid, how afraid your Archbishop is to speak in public. You know how, how shy I am. But the Lord sent me his angel last night and told me, Moloy Valles, do not worry about what to say tomorrow morning. And I said, why? And the angel said, look at the program tomorrow. I said, what about the program? Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagli will follow you. <laughs> and before noon, they will forget whatever you say. Brothers and sisters, our collective experience of this 51st International Eucharistic Congress since Sunday afternoon with the opening Eucharistic celebration in Plaza Independencia up to this morning has been extraordinary. Today is our fifth day and we still have three more wonderful days coming. Two passages from the scriptures keep coming up in my thoughts as this Congress continues to unfold. That line from the Psalms, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord keeps coming up. Yes, in this Eucharistic Congress here in Cebu, indeed, we taste and see the goodness of the Lord. But if I may add, here in Cebu, we, we talk we listen, oh yes, we pray, we sing, we laugh, and even dance about the goodness of the Lord. Yes, truly, we taste and see the goodness of the Lord in the Eucharist here in Cebu these days. And then, and then, our experience of being church and of being brought closer to Jesus during these days of the Eucharistic Congress. Because of this, the scene of the transfiguration keeps 
coming up in my thoughts. The catechisms and testimonies that we have heard moving us, touching our minds and hearts to embrace Jesus ever more closely. And listen to this, hear this. I am told by Bishop Dennis Villarrojo that 73 countries, 73, not counting the Republic of Bohol, you know, 73 countries are represented in this Eucharistic Congress. 73. A and one can easily picture the biblical image of peoples and nations coming to the banquet of the Lord. And what an inspiring experience it is to be in this vibrant local church of the Archdiocese of Cebu. All this, brothers and sisters, make me react like Peter in the transfiguration scene, saying, Lord, it is good that we are here. Together, let us say, Lord, it is good to be here. we are here. But I do not know if Archbishop Palma would like me to continue to say, and let us build two more pavilions <laughs> so that all in all we have three. One for the Cebu delegates, second for the rest of the Philippine delegation, and the third for the delegates from other countries. Brothers and sisters, in our prayer this morning, our fifth day of the Congress, St. Paul reminds us of a wisdom, a wisdom that is not of this age. Rather, it is a wisdom which is of God, mysterious, hidden, which God predestined before this age for our glory. But it is now revealed to us in Jesus Christ. A resonance of the theme, Christ in us, our hope of glory. Jesus Christ, God's mind and heart, the word made flesh, is God's wisdom now fully revealed to us. And it is in the paschal mystery of Jesus Christ, his passion, his death, and his resurrection, which is at the heart of every Eucharistic celebration, that we have the wisdom of God fully revealed to us. It warms our hearts, brothers and sisters, to hear St. Paul's words this morning. What eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This, all of this, God has revealed to us. This morning, we continue to pray that we may be granted the grace, grace upon grace as it were, that grace to move us to embrace more fully the wisdom of the Father that we experience in the Eucharist of Jesus. May St. Thomas Aquinas, whom we celebrate today, whose feast we celebrate today, the angelic teacher, guide us, inspire us to thirst, to hunger for this wisdom which we find in the Holy Eucharist that through the Eucharist that we continue to celebrate, we may grow in God's wisdom, ourselves, our lives, becoming Jesus for others, our lives as it were becoming tables of mercy and compassion. Yes, 
May we grow in wisdom, ourselves, our lives, like the bread of the Eucharist, be broken daily for others in loving service and solidarity. Indeed, may we become wiser, ourselves, our lives, becoming in the midst of misery and despair, beams of hope becoming sparks of glory. In the midst of the church, he spoke with eloquence. The Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
Let us praise Christ the Lord who enlightened the church by the teaching and work of St. Thomas. Lord, you are the splendor of the Father. Lord, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. May you be praised in our search for a truth. Lord, you said, whoever pursues truth comes to the light. May you be praised in our preaching and teaching. Lord, you said, those who would serve me must follow me. May you be praised by the service of your ministers. Lord, you said, anyone who loves me will be true to my word. May you be praised by all who live according to that word. Lord, you are the splendor of the Father. And now we pray as Jesus taught us. God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness at his study of sacred doctrine, grant us, we pray, that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord.